Hello, adventurous drinkers, and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. And today, we are coming to you from the Capstan Bar here, and uh, we're going to do some nautical uh, cocktails. Now, I'm no expert mixologist, but like anyone tending bar next to a ship, I uh, have an adventurous spirit and a willingness to try anything at least once. So what we're gonna do today, since I don't have a menu or a call sheet, you can see my, my board is blank, uh, we are going to go ahead and roll some dice to pick all of the ingredients that go into a cocktail. And since I am visiting another bar, everything's gonna be a little extra strange today, even for me. So we will be uh, picking from uh, the randomly assorted liquors behind me, as well as some mixers and other assorted fun stuff. So, uh, what do you say? Let's go ahead and get into our first first adventure on this. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Normally, we would begin by rolling a d4 to choose a uh, mixer, but uh, I don't have any essential mixers here. So, what we're gonna do instead is start with a d6. So, let's go ahead. We're going with, uh, with digital dice today. And uh, let's go ahead and choose between the less essential mixers that I've got on hand here. All right, so we're gonna be using tonic in today's cocktail. And uh, we're also going to uh, pick uh, from the liquors behind me using a D10 and a D6. So one and one. So that means we're starting with Frangelico. That's exciting. So what I'm doing, I've got them ranked here, and then I'll I'll do uh, uh, from right to left, and then from the front to the back for those two numbers. So we got Frangelico and Tonic, already a weird combination, yeah. uh, right? That's, that sounds like quite an experience. Uh, and let's pick a second liquor to go in there just to see what happens. Uh, another D10 and another D6. All right, so we got a four. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. That's Yenever. Yep. All right. Yenever. All right. Grain spirit. This is going to be a thing. This is going to be a thing. All right. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and as one final thing, we'll do a bar term today. And we'll roll a d12 for that. All right, I got a three, which is dash. Uh, dash is uh, the smallest unit of measure in the bar. Uh, it's less than a bar spoon. It's technically 1 64th of an ounce or something like that. Uh, and anytime that we have something that I can act on, I'm going to try to with our bar terms today. Uh, so I happen to have some Peychaud bitters, which I can put a dash of into today's cocktail. So, now that we have our cast assembled, let's see if we can turn this into something palatable. So let's head over to the bar top cam and put it all together. So let's go ahead and build that in a tin. Excellent. And with the Genève. Never 100% sure how to pronounce this one. How do you say it? Hanaver. Hanaver. Okay. Well, you know more Dutch than I do, so. All right. So this is uh, in the family of spirits that brought us gin. So, and it smells heavily of juniper, which is lovely. So let's do an ounce of Hanaver. Let's do, gosh, how do we balance Frangelico? I think we want to go a little bit lighter so it doesn't overpower all of the other flavors that we're putting into this. So let's do a half ounce of Frangelico. Do a dash of bitters, which should cut through some of the sweetness of that hazelnut flavor. We'll do a few D6 of cold damage to this cocktail. Top it with tonic. We're going to do about five ounces of tonic. Okay. 
stir this up. And this feels like a classy drink, so let's put it in a coupe. Well, the color's pretty. No magic portal today means that all of our colors are going to be true. That's exciting. All right. So there we have it, but what do we call it? Uh, so let's go ahead and pick one of these names. Uh, as you can see, we've got a uh, rack of 20 names set. These were all suggested by friends online, uh, and you can be one of those friends. Go ahead over to uh, uh, indecisionist.com slash dungeon barkeep, and you can suggest a name to go onto this chart. Uh, and uh, I select 20 names at random every month to be part of the new set of videos. So. Go ahead on over there. You can suggest any uh, any fun fantasy pun names you want, any weird cocktail names that you have uh, rattling around in your brain, and I'll be happy to stick them on there. And uh, you too could be the lucky namer of one of our cocktails here at Dungeon Barkeep. We're going to roll a d20 to pick from these names. 18. All right, so this concoction is the plus eight potion of dexterity. Uh, all right, so how does the plus eight potion of dexterity taste? Well, let's find out. Okay, I wasn't prepared for this, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, okay, so let's think about what we just did here. Effectively, Again, Genève being a relative of gin, we've effectively made a gin and tonic with a couple dashes of bitters and a little bit of hazelnut flavor, which I'm into. <laughs> I'm into it. It sounded like an absolute nightmare, but the plus eight potion of dexterity, I think, is a success. So the question is, what kind of adventure would the post plus eight potion of dexterity fit into? And given what's in it, and the fact that it is a little bit classier, it feels like we need to take it to a place that is more rarefied than our usual adventure locations. You know, this isn't going to be a, in a small hamlet on the edge of a dark forest. This is, this is a, a city drink, and specifically a city that has access to the world of flavors, things that can be brought in from, you know, huge distances. And this is something we talk about a lot on the show, is the, the idea of liquor culture and cocktail culture requiring globalization. So you have to have a port nearby, or maybe a portal. Maybe this is a, a world that has uh, interdimensional travel. And actually, I think that's the way I want to go with this. Because these, these things don't feel like they go together. They're, they're all from, you know, different parts of the world. I mean, mostly Eastern, Eastern and Western Europe, but still, you know, uh, juniper is, uh, is not something that grows in that part of the world. You had to kind of uh, bring it in. Same with hazelnuts. Um, so I think that there's a huge opportunity for this idea of a, a, a town or city that is placed on an interdimensional portal or a portal to other planes of existence, perhaps. And those uh, portals allow you to bring in these flavors from, from other universes, even. Uh, and maybe this is the first thing that your adventurers discover when they come into this world of portals. You know, they've, they've entered the city, they've come across, you know, time and space, they've, you know, met with a strange wizard who gave them access to the interdimensional uh, travel networks. And now they've arrived, and of course the first thing that they want to do is go to a tavern, because that's what you do. And, uh, and somebody hands them this. And it seems like it shouldn't work. It feels weird and wrong. But then you try it, and it's like you're a local. Suddenly you're, you're in uh, a whole new world of flavor, 
to go with the whole new world of uh, experience that your characters are about to go into. So I feel like I feel like this potion of dexterity is the welcome drink when you've left all that is familiar and need to feel comfortable again. Yeah. It's actually really good. Like I said, I highly recommend this. If you have the ingredients at home, try it out. Uh, highly, highly recommend. And let's see. Malkuth Soldier, hey there. So glad that you uh, were able to make it. Missed the last one, glad to see you again. Good to see you again, Malkuth. Good to see you again. Uh, and now, all that's left is to say thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all the things that YouTubers tell you to do, and drink adventurously.